And the famous story about you in that territory, which I guess Scott Hall has admitted, I heard him admit that he attacked you when you were sleeping, I guess. Yeah. It was due to a, due to a rib. Well, I guess no, it wasn't a rib at all. What, yeah. what had happened was uh, Dave Peterson, one of my best friends in life, um, he, he had, um, we went and checked in the hotel room, and he went in, he, he had a mustache thing, if, if you ever knew who D, DJ Peterson, Dave Peterson, because he wrestled, you know, he, AWA days, and, and made it at WWF too for a while. But he had to, you know, Scott Hall has that mustache thing, had the curly hair. He, he actually could ha have a little bit of a Scott Hall look. But what he did when we went and checked in the hotel that night, well, this particular night that caused all this, um, you got rates. I mean, you, they would if they were, they were all fans of, of, of Central State Wrestling. A lot of times, I mean, and so you get a rate, you get you know, a discount. And he went and said, "Yeah, I'm Scott Hall," because he wasn't known yet. He was just yeah. started in Central State, so he told me he was Scott Hall, and got the rate. He got us a rate, and you know, we, we ended up partying, um, partying up in, in the room, and and. We had a bunch of girls over. It was just a typical, you know, young young guys partying. You know, I mean, it was nothing, no damage. Like, uh, I think they actually took it out by check for $50. <laughs> you know, I think a lamp had broke. But what we had done was taken one, the, the top uh, bed off on the floor, threw it on the floor, so, because we had a bunch of people in there. So everybody was like, lay on this box spring, you can lay on the bed, you can lay on the, that bed, and the box. You know, we were just making more. It, it, it looked worse than what it was. It wasn't. It wasn't really that bad. Just a lamp broke, and they, you know, I got charged for that. But evidently, um, well, it, and then so next day was Thursday, and I, I, I remember like every detail of it. Um, I was still hungover because <laughs> back then I used to party. <laughs> when I said that today, <laughs> like used to, yeah, used to party, and. Um, Hung over from that. I mean, because we did, we partied. We had a bunch of girls over. We partied, and we got to the arena, uh, municipal auditorium there in Kansas City, and I, I laid on the table. It was like I'm taking a nap before my match. I want to do good, and it's TV taping, so you also want to do real good. But I'm laying there, hung over, like oh gosh, this hurts. <laughs> this hurts. And if, if actually I fell asleep, the next thing I know. Um, I'm, I'm on my hands and knees in his dressing room, and I'm hearing commotion, all this noise, and then I see Scott Hall going, like, oh, chat, fuck it. You're leaving, going out the door of our dressing room. And baby faces. We had uh, across the stage was where the heels. Back then, you know, they kept us separated, or at least tried, you know. Um, but they, you know, I, 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 I was I'm on my hands and knees in the dressing room, like, what the hell's going on? Dave, DJ, he come and got me. He goes, come here, man. And he took me from the mirror. The, this was cut open. It was like hanging a little bit. My lips were split. I mean, half of it was here, half was over here. And I'm looking like, what the fuck? What the hell just happened? What? What's going on? And he said, Scott, just come in and start pounding you while you was, you know, sleep on the thing. And at and, and that point, I got so upset about it that I'm sitting there thinking that, so he just beat me up while I was asleep. And he was big, man, six, you don't, y'all knew Scott, yeah, six, prime. like, yeah, yeah and, and boy, he was jacked back then, man, he was yeah. two, 280. So big old boy, especially my little 5'11 butt, right? But, you know, I, I remember going out the door and found a little pipe about this long, grabbed that pipe and went across the stage and Bob Geigel and uh, Bullard Bob Brown grabbed me where are you going? What are you doing? What are you going? I said, I'm about to go. No, I'm going to go see him. And I remember Bulldog said, don't do that. You just get hurt worse. That pissed, that pissed me off more, actually. Then <laughs> he said that. I almost wouldn't hit him, but they they made me go to the hospital. And they stitched up. And, and, I, and I'm smiling because I got to tell you something about Art Cruz. <laughs> you know, anybody remember Art Cruz, that name? I don't he, remember. He was, he was pretty good uh, and popular back then and, and in Central States. But I, I had to work with him that night. Uh, the next night, yeah, and I'm stitched up here, I'm stitched up here, um, and to finish the thing with Scott, um, that next day, I see him, it's kill auditorium, it's, you, know, you go up the stairs, and we got, there's like 20 dressing rooms, so you get, pretty much get your own room, you know, or, or something, you know, you know, one other person being there with you, but, um, 
stitched up, right? It just happened the night before. And I see Scott Hall. I'm in the hallway though, and I see him coming. I'm like, oh shit. Because <laughs> cause I'm like, and he sees me. And it's like, oh God, here we go. Because it was the next day, I'm still sore. And he, and he comes up and he stops a little bit and he goes, he goes, I guess you won't go round and round now. And I'm like, just one more time, but can I heal first? I was like, can I please heal first? Because <laughs> I'm sore shit. <laughs> and man, he apologized. He goes, man, they worked me. He said, he said Bulldog Bob Brown told him that you know, Marty, you know, they tore the room up and put your name on. Per first of all, it wasn't even me to sign in. But, but Bulldog told Scott, said, um, yeah, he, he needs to get, you, know, you need to you know, let him know he ain't going to do this no more. He, he tried to get you fired. Which you know, that's what that's what set Scott off. I mean, enough to do that, you know. And then he apologized. Then I was, then if I had that pipe, then I was gonna go out to the Bulldog. But Harley was there that night too. What's going on, kid? And I told him, I said, you know, he just did this shit. I'm gonna fuck him up. He goes, no, no, let me handle it. If I found, if I find out he did that, he did that to you. I'll take care of it. He won't like it. <laughs> so, it, but the thing was that I still wanted to do it. But but when when Harley, the owner of the company, and it's Harley Race, you know, you had, had to back up. Yeah. <laughs> but but let me finish this one thing though. Man. I told Art Cruz, you could see I was stitched up here and here, and, and Art and I were talking about, yeah, we we, we can do this, we can do that. I was just, just be careful right here, man. Just be careful. I'll be a son of a bitch if we didn't get in the ring. He snap bears me, and you, re you know how you do that pull thing? Oh, <laughs> he reaches pull like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happened with Scott, man. Yeah, because I heard a version from Scott that's on the internet, and he said he had asked Bob Brown for permission to do that if he would get in trouble or not, and they said there would be no consequences. Is that how, that's how that went? So uh, maybe that's why Harley never did anything, because he knew that Bob... I gave him okay. okay. And I will agree to this, uh, uh, to admit that, you know, maybe they needed to calm me down, but that wasn't the way. Because I was in there and I was new, and I was, you know, I was a wild boy. I was, and we, was, we was partying with girls, to, to doing what rockers do. <laughs> you know, like, when I say rockers, like, you know, bands and shit. When yeah. you're partying and stuff, yeah, okay, it was a little collateral damage, you know, a couple of, but they, they, they just thought, you know, it was too wild and that was their way of calming me down. I, you know, I got it, in hindsight, I got it, yeah, but that wasn't, I just didn't think that was the way, to, you know, not that way. And in those days, I guess that type of beating could happen in the ring with a wannabe or someone that was disrespecting the business too, and that never happens anymore, hardly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, as as we said, shooters. You know, they if you act in the fool, they will put a shooter on you. Yeah. <laughs> and what they call it? Stretch your ass. <laughs> yeah. But probably with your boxing background and amateur wrestling, it would have been more of a fair fight if you had known he was coming at you rather than. I'm, I'm pretty sure, and, and and I got better martial arts as as I went on because I did a lot of training through my wrestling career. Um, and, and you and anybody, that's, you know, when we got skills, when we learn skills, you know, it's, it's, it's your confidence comes from, from what you know. It's not about who that guy is, what can he do, it's what you know. I know what I can do, yeah. you know, and, and so, yeah, I, I never, I thank God I had a good sensei that, you know, can't be grounded with, you don't go out there and just do stuff to people. You've got the knowledge now to hurt somebody. But we don't do that. That's not why we teach you. We teach you to, and so you defense, defense, defense. You know. So yeah, I mean, if I would have been awake, <laughs> and, and and let me say this too, and I think I've even me and Scott had to talk about this, um, because you're friends now. Yeah, yeah, we, now. yeah, we were friends. Yeah, we, yeah, we've been friends for decades. Yes, yeah. but there was one time I reminded him, hey, Scott, I still owe you. <laughs> because we um, uh, remember Godfather, yeah. And at the time he was doing that, uh, what was he doing? That voodoo game, Papa Shango. Yeah, Shango. He was doing the Shango game. It was during that time frame, and you know it was a bunch of we always ribbing and stuff. 
locks. Who was locking, locking people's bags a bunch, and putting locks on the bags, and locking their bags to the ceiling, <laughs> locking it to somebody else's bag, locking it to the shoes. But and Papa and I were, were pretty good. We called him Bear. Bear, Bear, and I were good. And so I seen him coming off of one door, and I knew he'd be coming. So I was, I was cutting up. And I was reaching down by his bag with a lock, because the lock, like I said, the lock was a big <laughs> thing. There. So I'm back there, and I'm waiting for him, and I'm like, joking with him. And he stops, as he walks by, he stops, he goes, Money, you better not. And, he, and he's, he's supposed to be a you know, bona fide badass, too, you know. So I'm like, I was just playing. But evidently, Scott Hall went and started stirring it up. He tried to get you, he, and he got him so worked up, like we do physical, you know, we do the blood pressure thing, yeah. and all that. His blood pressure would do. They were saying you got to get it down. We can't let you. That made him be more mad at me. <laughs> Papa come over and said, "What if I don't make it tonight? We'll be so good." I'm like, "Bro, I was just." And I went to Scott. And that's why I went to Scott because Scott was like, yeah, he, "He was gonna put that lock on your back." I was like, "Bro, you know I owe you one, right?" Whether or not I can, I'm pretty sure I could. <laughs> Whether or not I can or not. I still owe you, cause that's a hard thing. An ass whooping like that, ass whooping first of all is hard to handle, but one like that, it's hard to go ahead and shake hands, say okay, yeah, you tore my ass up while I was asleep. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a hard thing to accept. <laughs> and in this business, they talk about it forever. Yeah. 